Hey, welcome to the Riggin Farm YouTube channel. It's a chilly morning below freezing here on the farm. Today we're supposed to get the shipping container delivered, fingers crossed. They said they want to make sure that the ground is solid before they come and deliver. With the temperature being below freezing, all of the mud has frozen really solid. It's going to get above freezing this afternoon, so I'm not really sure if it'll turn to mud by that point or not. As a safety precaution, I've got some little ones with me. I have them collecting sticks that they're going to put all in the muddy area so that there's some traction for the truck to drive on in the event that he has to go into the muddy area. On the way to the property, we stopped to get some diesel for the tractor because it was getting pretty low since I've been using it so much. The yellow can signifies diesel, much like a red can signifies gasoline, like most people use for lawnmowers and other yard equipment. This diesel is a little bit different than what you get at the regular gas station. This is what's considered off-road diesel. Off-road diesel and regular diesel are pretty much the same with two main differences. The off-road diesel has a red dye, so that you know that it's off-road versus a regular diesel. The biggest difference is that this isn't taxed the same way that regular fuel is. There's a significant difference in price, usually about 50 cents a gallon, to get off-road diesel. It's meant specifically for farms and other off-road uses because those taxes are usually meant to maintain roads. If the vehicle's not on the road, it's not doing any damage to that road. I'm gonna go ahead and grab the can and walk over to the tractor and add some fuel. I haven't heard from the delivery company just yet about whether or not they're actually coming today. I might have to give them a call and find out what the plan is. Oh, I think he's calling right now. That was the driver, and I'm pretty sure it was a different guy than I had talked to last week when we were supposed to get our delivery. This guy seemed a lot nicer, and I'm feeling semi-confident that everything's gonna go well. He said that his truck needs to be on something as solid as concrete to deliver, and I don't know that this mud with the sticks on top of it's gonna be as solid as concrete. He also said he needs about 100 feet of space from where the shipping container ends to the front of his truck. That area is probably barely 100 feet. The kids have to work extra hard to get those sticks laid out so he can get some traction and not get stuck in the mud. <sighs> Fingers crossed. Let's hope it works. Back to where we left off. Time to get some fuel in the tractor. That did not go how I expected. I was adding the fuel to the tank, just like I've done with a lawnmower. The nozzle cracked off and fell into the fuel tank and started gushing diesel everywhere. I'm a member of a Kubota tractor group on Facebook, and everyone on there is super helpful when people have questions, so I just posted the situation. I'll check back in a few minutes to see if anybody's responded. I googled what happens if plastic gets in your fuel tank, and from what I've read, it should be fine? The plastic cans are meant to hold fuel. It's not like it's going to dissolve and mess anything up. Plastic's not a liquid, so it's not going to get into the fuel line. I guess it won't clog it or anything. Maybe when I take the tractor in to get serviced, they can take it out for me. I don't know. I'm kind of scared. This is a very expensive piece of equipment, and I don't want to mess it up. One thing I know for certain is that Harbor Freight's diesel cans are garbage. The nozzle on the can will not support the weight of the can very well and snap off upon use. That is not what's supposed to happen. It has a little lever on there that you put on the side of your fuel tank opening and it releases the fuel into your tank. But if it can't support the weight, then it snaps off and breaks. That's what happens when you try to save a few bucks. Cost yourself a lot more. I guess the kids are pretty cold because they stopped putting sticks down for me and ran to the car to warm up. <sighs> well, they're not getting their allowance this week. Guess I gotta do it myself. I got tired and I don't really feel like doing it anymore. Hopefully this is good enough. If it's not, oh well. You might be thinking to yourself, he has a tractor, why didn't he use that? Most of those sticks are buried in the mud and I didn't want to bring a bunch of mud. I didn't want to use the grapple and end up getting more mud than sticks or branches or logs. Could have put the bucket on there and loaded up the bucket full of stuff and just made one trip. That would have been really efficient. I'm really scared to run the tractor right now with the fuel can nozzle and pieces of plastic in there. I've gotten quite a few responses on that Facebook post I made. Some people said, just leave it in there, take it out whenever it's empty. I took one suggestion and purchased something on Amazon a couple minutes ago. It's like a 36 inch flexible thing that has like a little claw at the end that you can operate from the other end. And apparently it has like a little LED light on there as well. And I can use that to grab the pieces of plastic and pull them out, hopefully. There were several comments telling me that's what you get for buying from Harbor Freight. 
probably some pretty good advice right there. A lot of people suggested getting a 45 to 50 gallon transfer tank, which I guess I could put in the back of the trailer, fuel it up and just keep it at the property. And then there's like a hose, you can just like transfer it directly into the tractor. That'll probably be a really good investment. I'm not sure how much they cost. One guy actually suggested getting the one from Harbor Freight. Decisions, decisions. This day has already started out pretty disappointing like the last time I was out here. I'm not gonna lie, I'm getting a little discouraged. It's really hard work and there's no plan. I just kind of go with the flow. It's not really my style. I really like structure and plans. I have things planned out for this farm 10 years in the future. I try to future-proof everything. I try to be efficient and thoughtful with everything that I do. There are just so many things that are out of my control right now. Can't control the weather. I tell somebody what needs to be done. I'm paying them to do a job. They don't do what I ask, and there are no consequences for them not listening. I told the construction guy, I'm getting a 40-foot shipping container on the property. I don't care exactly where it goes. I just want it in this general area so that we can access it from the driveway. I gave him free reign. I said, put it wherever you want. Put it in any direction you want. Whatever's easiest for you. Just make sure that wherever we put it, the delivery truck can get in here, deliver it, and drive away. This guy said he has at least one shipping container on his property. I'm not sure if he has more than that. He should be familiar with the process and what it takes to get it on the property. This is also the same guy that said the layer of gravel he put down should be sufficient and there's no reason that we would need more than this. If you saw the last video, you know that that is nowhere near enough gravel. He did admit to me that one of the last times I talked that we'll definitely need to put some more gravel down. If I was in charge of this job, which I should be because I'm the one paying for it and telling them what needs to be done, they're responsible for following codes, which I don't know. I do have enough knowledge and common sense to realize that this is a bad choice. What they should have done from the very beginning is put in this larger gravel like we have for the shipping container pad. Put a layer of that down, drive it down into the mud, put a layer of what they did put on, then they would put a layer of what is over here on the driveway on top of that. And then after that, they would put even finer gravel on top. That would make it nice and compact, allow for drainage. We wouldn't have the flooding issues that we do. It would be ideal. That's what needed to happen from the very beginning. I don't know why it didn't. Another concern I have that I'm not really sure what their thought process was, if they even had one, is what to do with the drainage in this area right here. All of that water pools right here on the ground. <sighs> We're going to have to find some solution to get that water out of here and either on that side of the road or that side. Preferably that side. One option would be to install a French drain. I'd have to dig up this driveway that they put in. We can dig a hole right here where that big muddy spot is and dig a trench that goes across where the driveway is all the way to where it starts to slope down towards the creek. On this end right here, what we would do is we'd leave it open and maybe put some grates on there to catch debris. All of the water that pools would go right there, down into the drain, underneath the driveway, down the slope and into the creek. That would be ideal. I'm not sure if we're gonna be able to do that with this driveway. There's probably a way to dig a hole underneath the driveway, but then it's just gonna collapse. What we'll have to do is put something really strong and bury it deep enough to where the constant driving over it isn't gonna crush the pipe and prevent it from doing its job. I suppose we could always put a little koi pond there for the water to go into. I think I'm gonna go ahead and take a break, sit down, drink my coffee that's in my rig and farm tumbler, should still be nice and warm. Just take a few minutes to calm down, collect my thoughts. A lot of people in that tractor group said that it should be fine to run the tractor with those pieces of plastic in there and just to not really worry about it. Once I get that tool that I ordered, I should be able to pull them out and just give me that peace of mind that they're not in there anymore. I calmed down a little bit, decided to get some tractor therapy. I hopped on the tractor and came up to the area where that stump is that I was working on last time I was up here. And I'm making some pretty good progress. I'll flip the camera around and show you what I've done. I'm not sure how well you can see. I've freed up most of the roots and I've actually been able to push the stump a little bit. Let me see if I can get good video of it while I'm driving the tractor. As you can see, it's moving a little bit. I'm gonna put the camera down and try some more and hopefully I can get this sucker free today. Well, I'd say I got it. 
the stump is free officially. I worked on it a little over two hours last time I was here, and then maybe after another 20 to 30 minutes, I was finally able to get the sucker free. I was so excited, I wanted to get started on the next one. So there's another stump right next to it that I started on, and as I was digging dirt out, I started filling in the hole that I created while I was digging this stump out. So hopefully I can do that. I can move from one stump to the next. Instead of doing piles of dirt like I did the first couple stumps, I can move that pile of dirt into that previous hole where the stump was. Once I get this stump and that stump free, I'll go ahead and switch over to the grapple and I'll move the four stumps that I've already dug up. I'll move them over to the pile of debris over there so they can be out of the way and we can start smoothing things out. Hopefully get the garden going pretty soon because that's very important. Well, that was a complete disaster. I got a call from the shipping container guy saying that he was gonna be here in about 10 minutes. I went ahead and pulled the car out of the driveway and off to the side so that he could get down there and do the delivery. He said that there's no way that his truck would be able to get uphill from the driveway. He said there's not enough gravel, the driveway is not compact enough, it's not an adequate driveway like we already knew. I was like, well, maybe you could back up and deliver it past the gate off to the side, kind of where I have the tractor parked right now. And he's like, yeah, we could do that. Then he was trying to figure out how to turn his truck around and back up. And that's when all the trouble started. Let me give you a sneak peek of some of the damage that was done. That rut wasn't there when we got to the property today. Do you see this destruction and mayhem? Dude got stuck in the mud for several hours. We ended up having to call a wrecker. Got some footage of that. Take a look. Now he's pulling him out. I asked the driver if when he got pulled out, he'd be able to back up and set our container down next to the driveway. He said that he could. He decided what he should do is just set it next to the road. So the shipping container is pretty much in the road. So there's the shipping container. There is enough space to where people can drive past, so I'm glad we're not blocking anybody, but it's still a complete disaster. Not at all what we wanted. We have it, so that's cool. We might be able to get the construction guy to use his skid steer and or mini excavator to move it to where it needs to go. I just hope it doesn't get stuck in the mud and make it even worse. I haven't even looked inside yet. Let's go ahead and take a peek. I don't even know how to open it. There we go. Progress. Oh my goodness. I don't even know. How the heck do you open up one of these things? At least it's hard to get into. Woo! That was exciting. Got both the doors open. It's pretty dark in here as expected because there's no electricity or lights or anything. I really don't want to walk my muddy boots in here or drive a muddy tractor in here for that matter. One extra thing done on the farm today. Let's see if we can close it back up now. One door down, one to go. Woo, hard to do. Probably be a lot easier if I wasn't holding a camera. Okay, shipping container closed up. The kids are still with me. They've been really good sports about this. This whole process took about two and a half hours. It should have been like a 30 minute process, but getting stuck in the mud's always fun. Thank you for being a part of our pain and suffering today. Please give the video a thumbs up so at least we have something good to come out of this video. Comment below if you have any questions, if you wanna share your sympathy with us. It would mean so much to us if you could subscribe to our channel if you don't already. Hopefully the next video is a more positive one. Bye.